bunker and basically involved in the stand down. Well, who had a stand down? Because t the Pentagon is in a no fly zone. Anything that flies any so close to the Pentagon is to be shot out of the air. Governor, and that day nothing was shot out of the air. We're almost out of time. Uh, very powerful. Folks, you better set your TVOs, your DVRs. This may be the only time you ever see this. They, norm they normally air the episodes more than 50 times, but they've already deep-sixed one because of Homeland Security and congressional uh, th things. It, it really hit a nerve. Uh, and, uh, I, I mean, let me tell you, knowing what I know about this episode, I'm, I'm quite frankly crossing my fingers. I'll be surprised if it even makes it on air. There's been a lot of other stuff behind the scenes that I can't get into, but this is real TV. Ventura and his crew have a lot of courage to bring you. Okay, we're back again, and boy, I watched that show last night. You downloaded it from YouTube, and it was 47 minutes without the commercials. Great, man, watching it without commercials is the way to go. Um, but you find out that he repeats himself a lot. You could probably make a 30-minute version of his show without having any repetitions. But, uh, you know, it's kind of like, in just a moment, we'll tell you what you tuned in to hear. But first, yeah, no, anyway, uh, but... It's you can go and watch that. I strongly recommend that you go and watch. They they talk to the pilots about uh, you know Hani Hanjur being the one who piloted that spiraling down <laughs> downfall of an airplane. I don't know that finally hit the Pentagon. And did you catch that part about? Uh, or you, well, I watched it. You haven't maybe, but the point is uh, they had the. Uh, the story about the trillions of dollars and all of the records for the trillions of dollars that were, that Rumsfeld talked about just the day before nine ten, Rumsfeld came out and said two point three trillion dollars seem to be missing. We don't seem to have the receipts for any of our transactions. We don't know, but we're working on it. And they they had all their uh, records and computers and the accountants working on it, who and might have known might have been able to tell you something about what's being covered up and what isn't. And they were all coincidentally right in that section that got hit by the plane. And, uh, you know, it, it reminds me of Building 7. You know, why would anybody want to take down Building 7? You, you know, the two towers were more than enough to do this terrorist thing all over the world. So, I mean, that was sufficient for their plans. But why take down Building 7? Well, that seemed to, you know, an easy answer once you found out about all of the uh, records for hundreds and hundreds of court cases being prosecuted on Wall Street, uh, including Enron, sixty billion dollar scandal or swindle of California. All those records and evidence was stored in Building Seven. Gone, baby. It's gone. All those people are off scot-free. They're going, whoo, baby. I think these CEOs probably sat around getting drunk one night, 300 CEOs from all these different companies or boards of directors or whoever put in the conspiracy group of your choice. But I think they were sitting around and they concocted this plan. The insurance company said, yeah, we'll raise the rates 20 times. And everybody else, you know, everybody made the money they could. Billions and billions of dollars everywhere. Not just the the military industrial complex. Anyway, we'll, it remains to be seen if we have the, uh, you know, any censorship of this episode. I kind of don't think so because most of what was shown was, wasn't new. Although um, he did a real good job of uh, talking to Rob Balsamo from Pilots for 9-11 Truth. And, uh, oh, that reminds me, you know, tying it in earlier with the thing I was talking about Janet Napolitano on the screens in Walmart saying, turn your, you know, turn people in if you see them doing something wrong or whatever. Uh, the, the, the crush to limit information and to get you to rat on your buddy is increasing so much that you have to, you really have to be aware of it. Um, before I get all tangled up, I've got one more video that I want to show you. This is from Russia Today, one of the best places for information. You know, and you people get rid of your old 
anti-communist thoughts and start looking at Russia today as a place to get really good, unbiased, or at least biased the other direction uh, of news. And they went to cover the uh, latest protest at the School of the Americas where we train assassins from all over the world. Uh, and it was a peaceful protest. But right after the protest, they got busted. The, the news crew from Russia Today, a bona fide news crew, got arrested and put in jail for 36 hours without charges. Anyway, we'll, I'll let them tell the story, and then we'll come back and tie it all together. An RT crew was locked up in a U.S. jail for 32 hours after filming a protest against a controversial military training facility in Georgia, dubbed the School of Assassins. Reporter Kaylin Ford described her treatment as brutal, and international organizations condemned the use of police violence against members of the media. But despite all the outrage, American mainstream media has remained silent. Ganesh Jikan has more. It started off as a peaceful rally outside a U.S. training camp for Latin American military and police officers. What followed this nonviolent protest caught everyone by surprise. Dozens were arrested. Police targeted journalists along with the activists. I'm a member of the press. I'm a member of the press. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Among those arrested were RT correspondent Kayleen Ford and RT cameraman John Conway. Both there on assignment, covering the protest that brought together thousands of people. I'm so tired. I can't feel my finger. I asked the officer to please remove the handcuffs, these plastic handcuffs, and at least put one on that was a little bit looser. He took out a hunting knife to remove my handcuffs, and, and that's actually part of the reason that I have the cuts on my wrist. For hours, Kaylin hadn't a clue what the charges against her were. We asked on the bus, um, what are we being charged with? And one of the sheriffs said, don't worry, no charge, the ride is free. We were taken to the county jail and we ended up spending 32 hours there. Student Tommy Ramirez, who was there as an activist, tells a similar story. I kept asking them, what did I do? Tell me my rights, tell me why I'm getting arrested. I kept asking them and I never got an answer from them. Every year, thousands of people gather at the gates of the training camp dubbed the School of Assassins calling for its closure. Officially there to train Latin American military and police, it schooled many of Latin America's most notorious torturers, mass murderers and dictators. Despite anger at the establishment, violence has never been part of the protests. So why the mass arrests now? We feel like the message was, look, you know, we don't even want you to be there. We're going to make it dangerous, you know, to, to, to make you think twice to even show up. Despite the outcry from many at the rally that their rights of freedom of speech and assembly were trampled upon, it's not a story that's caught the eye of the U.S. media. We can see the newspapers of this country editorialize in favor of free speech and First Amendment and give stirring and passionate defenses of these core American values. But when another journalist from another media outlet is arrested without charge, without provocation, and put onto a paddy wagon, those media outlets are largely silent. And I think it's because they feel like these are stories that aren't supposed to be covered. Well, I guess so much for covering stories ignored by the U.S. mainstream media. The incident at Fort Benning left some guessing what would have been the extent of the media coverage in the West had a member of the foreign press been treated in a similar way in some other country, say Russia. The remarkable thing about it, let's say, you know, in Moscow here, a BBC correspondent or a CNN correspondent had gone to a demonstration where there was a legal permit and was roughed up by the police. And in the case of our correspondent, she was almost sexually assaulted. Those are her words. Um, that would have made headlines all around the world. It would have been a diplomatic row between countries. But no, in the case of the United States. The international community has condemned what's happened and called on the U.S. to respond. Even the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe sent a letter to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton calling the journalists' arrests disturbing. While it is clear that police play a crucial role in maintaining order during public demonstrations, the indiscriminate rounding up of media and bringing charges against them goes well beyond what's necessary to keep the peace. 
But the U.S. State Department, which is usually quick to condemn freedom of speech violations in other countries, has remained surprisingly tight-lipped about its own. Gainis Chagan, RT, Washington, D.C. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks for the getting a little parts here. Well, from arresting reporters who cover protests against things that we shouldn't really be doing, like training assassins from all over the world. Assassins from all over the world? Isn't that illegal? It's supposed to be. And we even have uh, George Bush admitting that he's authorized assassins. We have uh, Dick Cheney admitting the same thing. And I mean, what kind of country do we live in? From Cass Sunstein, that's Obama's regulations are, and his uh, famous cognitive infiltration of 9-11 groups that he called for, uh, they're really putting on the full court press. Now, we're going to go ahead and open up the phone lines here. Um, we're 503-288-4442, and this time we have the other one also, 503-288-4448. And um, I'd like to get your take on what you've just been watching. And anybody that watched uh, Jesse's show, uh, there's a you know 47 minutes of information that he put on. Maybe we could uh, you know spread that around a little more. Did you know that almost every bit of the official story has been contradicted? Over and over again, we find more and more evidence mounting that contradicts the official 9-11 story. Even six out of, nine, six out of ten of the 9-11 commissioners claim that that report was a lie. If the commissioners themselves call it a lie, why should we continue to support it officially? I mean, that's still the official story. Well, it's just amazing. We... Well, I hear the phone lines coming. By the way, behind me is a, a new slideshow that I put together. These are the artifacts that are currently at the JFK airport. It's a, I think that they're going to put up a 9-11 memorial, and I'm not sure if this, these are just in storage or if they actually have the memorial up. It looks like they're just in storage. But uh, anyway, these are all new photos. I should probably move over so you can see them better. But... <laughs> Okay, we do have a we do have a phone call, so go ahead, caller. Hey, Bill, just want to say you're doing a great job, and I uh, want to remind people that America is still a great country. Wow, look we at just that! We've got these CFR infiltrators, and they've worked for uh, you know since uh, the early 1900s to worm their way into all the uh, structures of power. Uh, Cheney was head of the CFR, uh, Bush is their CFR, and uh, America is waking up. You know, well, uh, how about the big new Brzezinski? Who, Brzezinski was. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just want to say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> America's a great country. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, it, see, what we call America, when we're talking about all the bad things America does, that's really our government. The people themselves would not have a war. I mean, people don't have well, wars. You know and, 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 hey, I don't think it's our government either. I think it's, it's certain people that have infiltrated. Oh, yeah, are. I'll go. It, it's certainly not an official policy of the government. It's it's rogue people within the government yeah, for sure. There's great people in our government, and, uh, and they're waking up too, you know. We well, that's why we keep, you know, we're, that's why we brand ourselves as terrorists by holding up the Constitution. You know, we still have hopes that maybe we'll obey the law if we could get our government to obey their own laws then this would be a much nicer place and we wouldn't have to com complain about the nasty things <laughs> there are soldiers and policemen and people in the government who do obey the law and who really care about the law i know that uh they're the minority now but they're waking up well i hope that they are able to influence the others if you and when oath keepers, man. it's people like you that uh you just keep it up bill we need you, buddy. Thank I'm you. I'm let you go. Right on. Thanks. Hang in there, Bill. Okay. And uh, what I was going to say about Zbigniew Brzezinski is that, uh, you know, he was the, what, what, the chairman of the Bilderbergers, I guess, and also he helped form the Trilateral Commission, and he helped uh, all of these groups, all three of them. Okay, anyway, caller. You're on the air. Hi, hi, Bill. How you doing? Pretty good. 
Well, I've been watching your show for some time, and I, I'll just take a minute of your time because I'm well-versed on it. Uh, Go for question. it. 9-11 was an inside job. I want to compliment you on your show, and it's good to see someone keeping this topic alive.